Porter City presents 21 Days Prayer and Fasting. Theme, Passover and Freedom. Date, 30th May to 19th June 2022. Host, God's Anointed Servant, Prophet Nana Seyo I made a statement that when God picked the people of Israel from Egypt, she has a plan of taking them to a land that flow with milk and honey. As a result of all those things that are happening, it was pointing to the fact that he was just trapping Christ through the Jewish religion. Amen. That means that he has a purpose for their life. There is a little bit of, I don't want to use a strong word, the generation where we find ourselves in our Christianity. A lot of us don't even know why Jesus saved us. Today I'm going to ask you to pray about something. Everybody has a mandate. Everybody. If there is no purpose for your life, then the day you become born again, God must take you to heaven. Jesus says something in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. He told the disciples, say, Then said he unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. It came as a result. He said, the harvest is what? Plenteous. But the labors are what? Few. Hmm. Then, she went ahead to tell the disciples. In fact, before that one happened, it was in verse number 30, 36, that when he saw the multitudes, she was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. They were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he told, as a result of what he saw, he said, Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is precious, but the labors are few. And the next verse he said that, Don't just jump into it. Pray. He therefore that the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers. I tell you today, we are not laborers, so we are just receivers. I'm going to give you a prayer point. And it's very strong, but take it and pray with it. I believe that part of the frustrations of a lot of the children of God in our generation is that we have not found what God has called us to do. It means that if God called you to be, let's say, a shepherd, a pastor, a singer in the church and you are pursuing business, you'll be frustrated. She will be frustrated. Number two, you will never have satisfaction. Even if you give you all the money, there will still be some emptiness in you because you have not discovered the reason why you came to this earth. It is possible you have been disobeying God for 30 years. It is possible you have been disobeying God for 20 years. It is possible because, listen, Jesus Christ was at the age of 12. And as of look at most of our prayer points. Our prayer point has to gear towards, Lord, fight for me. Lord. Yesterday, we left, we left the studio. And when I went back, the Lord spoke to me and said that, is that all that is going to be the prayer point? I am ready to answer the prayer. But much as they want me to do something for them, what are they doing for me? So, people are frustrated, confused. I mean, you hear people say, I have done everything. I don't think so. There is something you have to do that you are not doing. And your mind has not even gone there. Did I want you to pray? Lord, don't let me mix your purpose for my life on it. 
Now, it may look like I am too, I am too an ancestor. It's a combination of Cree and English. The word to means auto and ancestor. But let me tell you something. One day, every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. We will be standing there and we will account every one of us. The Bible said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And if you don't have teeth, it will be gum. I can tell you, people are frustrated, confused. Now, I realize that when you have not discovered your mandate, marriage doesn't work. Because all the forces fight you. The whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Where are they? Now, this, this is going to be our prayer, among other things. Let me show you how satisfaction this thing is. And it's not a common thing. Even Jesus, who was God, one day Jesus was with the disciples, and probably for the first time, he saw the common thing. He said, I'm hungry. You, hungry? Hector, scatter. They run to town. Let's go and get some food for this. This man has never said he's hungry in life before. They were at, they were at Samaria. She sat there. They ran to town. I'm sure they were going to get red, red. When they came back, Jesus has encountered the Samaritan the woman. The common story that everybody talk about it. The woman at the Samaritan were looking to draw water. And Jesus asked him, that, give me water to drink. And he said, why is it that you be a Jew? Ask of me a Samaritan. Now, the difference between the Samaritans and the Jew, for those of you who don't like to study the Bible, is that the Jewish people who intermarry, it means that they marry, and the women they marry or the men were not Jews. So it's kind of a mixer. If in our time you say, of course, like you, you travel to America and marry, let's say, uh, uh, when I look at your feet, a Filipino. Yeah. And when you brought a Filipino, you, it, it, the blood is a mixer. So the, 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 the pure Jewish people, they didn't have respect for them. So the woman brought it out. It's a kind of like a racism in your, in your area, tribalism kind of thing. And so after the encounter, Jesus managed to talk to the woman and gave the woman a word of knowledge. Um, Jesus told her that, I can give you water to drink that you will never need to come here. And he said, you don't even have, you see, how funny it is that when we are talking about spiritual things, people don't understand and they interpret it naturally. So he said, you don't even have anything to draw the water and you are still asking for the water. He said, give me that water. He said, go and call your husband. He said, I have no husband. And then Jesus got attention by saying, yes, I know that you have had five husbands. Even the one you are living with, you are still parasiting. I hope you are not parasiting. I, I don't think so. Be a portarian, I'm not too sure. Hallelujah. And then he caught the woman attention. The other woman said, mm, I perceive you are a prophet. Now, the disciples, Jesus, the woman went to town and told, because he's a husband snatcher, he's a very popular woman because everybody see her, they just, they just cover their husband's face. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Or, or you don't want to understand what I'm saying? Huh? What I mean is that if you are working with your husband and that woman just see you, you're, you're so every woman in that town has a cloth. Once they see that, the woman is coming. Then they'll be holding the husband, let's go. After you pass, then they remove the cloth. So, because of everybody knows her, now, how do I know that? For her to go to town and say, come and see a man. She's a very smart woman too. Very smart. I like her smartness. If you went to the town and say, come and see a Jew, the Samaritan would have come. So say, a man. Because the Samaritans has nothing to do with the Jewish people. So he said, come and see a man who has told me everything about my life. You, we want to see that man. And they ran. Now hear this. Jesus has finished preaching to the crowd. The disciples came back with a boy. And they said, Master, eat. He said, No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. They said, Ah, has somebody brought you food? You just complain you are you are hungry. And he said, My food or my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. That means that when you discover what has called you to do, it gives you satisfaction. 
natural. I mean, you cannot explain that. So there is a reason there is an emptiness in you. There is a reason why you, you, you find it difficult to sleep. There is so, you have done everything for everybody except God. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And to do what? Not only to do it, all, I make sure I finish it. So did he finish it? On the cross of Calvary, it is finished. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. The people who are really rejoicing in heaven are those who have come to the earth, discover what God has called them to do, and they finish it. Hear this. I heard a story about Oral Roberts University, which, as a result of the Christian background, is study university. A lot of Christian men, Christian preachers go there. In fact, when Joel Austin's mother was attacked by the cancer of the liver, that was where they sent her. And one old professor said, I have witnessed a lot of old preachers die. Those who work for God, and most of them die with a smile. Not everybody dies smiling. And you, at 90, I don't know how your face will look like if you are going to continue like this. Can you evaluate yourself and you can come to the place to conclude that you are doing nothing for God? Nothing. For the past five years, no soul has entered the book of life through you. Listen to what Dr. Mas Moro said. Of blessed memory. He said, the richest place on earth is not the oil field of Saudi Arabia. It's not the gold souk in South Africa. It's not all the gas system in Russia. In Ukraine. See, the richest place on earth is the cemetery. He said, man of God, why? He said, because it's in the cemetery, the books that were supposed to be written were not written. Music that was supposed to be sung were not sung. Giftings and talent on people as a result of chasing money. He forgot about it. Lift up your two hands. Today might not be the prayer point that you are looking for gold and silver and permanent cream and lipstick. There is something I'm telling you this. What I do, it gives me satisfaction. Amen. I don't spend money. No. 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 I have just found out the reason why I was born. They were trying to train me to become a, a kind of um, a, a civil engineer or something. They were training me to become an, uh, uh, a quantity surveyor, a civil engineer. And I could have made some money. My, some of my classmates are still my sons. They are here. We were sitting there, writing as I'm sitting on Girls of London at that time. Because at that time, we didn't even have those schools in Ghana. And doing it. But... My mathematics teacher brought me a cutlass at school that I should go to so many and go and read. Because I was not good in mathematics. For some reason. Interest, all my children are very good in mathematics. I don't know where they got it from. Is it bad to go to school? No. That's not the purpose. If you discover that thing, if you discover that you sing, the reason many people are frustrated in church is that they are following other people's mandate. Preachers, the most frustrating thing in the kingdom is to do what you don't have grace for. Anything you are doing in the kingdom that God has not assigned for you to do, it brings you frustration. Yes, so some pastors see another pastor doing this. No. Listen, if you are called to just pray, you will not envy those who are preaching. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, that's it. And it gives you satisfaction. There are people who come to church. When they sweep the church, they are okay. When they clean the toilet, they are okay. When they pack people's cars, they are fine. There is a man called Father Nash. She was the engine behind Shasfini's successful crusades. One of the greatest revivalists the kingdom has ever seen. 
It is recorded that Father Nas died. When Father Nas died, Charles Finney couldn't do crusades again. And they find out that the engine behind Charles Finney was Father Nas. He just found his ministry, anointed man of God. All he does was to pray for Charles Finney to do crusade. And he discovered that ministry and he was doing it from the depth of his heart and everything was successful. What do you do? This is a very important prayer that you have prayed. You didn't come to the earth to just pray uh, and get a fiancé and marry and after that you are praying for children. After children you want a car. After a car you want twins and you are that. So the reason why most of our prayers are not answered is that it's selfish and self-centered. Yes, sir. Because if you seek the kingdom of God, those things will be added. It's natural. It's natural. It comes. Hallelujah to Jesus. It's natural. It comes very natural. It just comes. You have not discovered what God. So people are making money depressed. People are prospering depressed. They are living in good marriage but still feel like they are married the wrong person. If you have not discovered what God has called you to do, no matter who God put around you, you will frustrate the person. No. John Moore doesn't need to preach. No. Billy Graham never healed anybody in a crusade. Never. That's raw word. The cross of Jesus Christ, period. He preached for 68 years. Died almost 100 years. One message. B Billy Graham, one of the people that stirred revival. Yesterday, I was sitting with mommy and he showed me a huge Baptist church in, in, in South Korea. And he said, hey, God, he said, boy, look at the church. I said, this one was small. I said, almost the first three largest churches in the world are in South Korea. In fact, after Yong, Dr. Yongi chose the, the second largest church is the Presbyterian church. It's 600,000. And Dr. Yongi Cho raised his biggest crowd in the history in the Guinness Book of Records in South Korea. From Buddhism to Christianity. Among the Asia region there, I don't think there is any church, any town, Singapore, China, with revival than South Korea. Sixty years ago, Ghana was richer than South Korea. Sixty something years ago, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah took our money from our coffers and gave it to them, two million pounds. When Dr. Yonggi Cho came here by invitation of Bishop Daki Ward Mills, he, he stood at Independence Square and thanked us. For supporting them. Today, South Korea is among the first 12 richest countries in the world. I revived. If you count the first 10 to 14 richest countries in the world, South Korea, the Samsung you are using, it comes from there. Everything. The Hyundai. Hyundai just, they stopped doing cars recently. When Germany and all those automobiles, Britain were there, Hyundai and Kia. Even America, they've taken over the market. Because they are full efficient. They did their car such a way that the poor can use it. You don't need to spend much more for it. And it even, it even took over the American market. Conquered Ford and all those things. What has God called you to do? What is your mandate? When you meet Jesus and he said, I gave you the gift of singing, what will you tell him? You have not even tried. Let me tell you this. This thing doesn't end like this. Oh. No, it's not going to end like this. One day we will stand before Jesus. One day, what did I say? We will stand before Jesus. We are going to account for the gift he put in us. And I'm, I can tell you this. The lack of satisfaction, the depression, the oppression, the, the, the upper pressure, all the pressure on your life is that you have not found out what God has called you to do. I am not talking about working for a bank. I'm not talking about having a business. That one doesn't add up to heaven. I'm not talking about trying to. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I always like the way Bishop Daki almost put it. He said, I was aspiring to be a, a, a lecturer in the medical field. And I was going to be a professor of medicine. And so, when I say God has called me, everybody was disappointed. He said, I remember when I was going to get married, 
I went to a pastor to help me. The pastor said, stop and go and practice medicine and I will help you to marry. But today, he said, today, what God has done with me, even if I become the founder of medicine, No, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. These guys, when they finish the assignment, they are going to heaven smiling. No. There are people God has called. They cannot leave the ministry and come. They cannot leave the job and come. No. There's a certain risk in, in responding to God. I have finished school. All my classmates were working. I say God has called me. I got a lot of insults. Yeah. It's not easy to follow Jesus. It's not easy to follow Jesus. You must be hungry before you get some food later on. It's why I said to follow Jesus. No. No. Anyone want to follow me, pick up your cross. Look at the mandate. Jesus was sending the disciple to say, don't take pears, don't take anything. Go. The labor is worthy of his high. Think about it. No. The labor is worthy of his high. But you see, he tested the system. When they come back, say, when I send you without pause and script, did you lack anything? They say nothing. They say nothing. So following Christ is not for disgrace. It may start difficult, but at the end of the day, you bless you. It's not for shame. It's not for disgrace. I want to ask you a question today. If you meet Jesus tomorrow, what are you going to account for doing in the kingdom? The most, the most serious ones are those who are called to give, but they are not giving. No, we all can give, but as some people, their ministry is giving. Yeah. All of us can give. Everybody gives. But there are some people, eh, their mandate is to support the kingdom in a certain way. And God is not blessing them because of their stinginess. Because there's some danger. A lot of you want to get money, but you don't know that money is a God. The most dangerous thing you ever do is to have money and not know how to control it. Now listen, there are two ways you can have it. Anytime money is at your disposal, you cannot be neutral. Either you have money or money have you. So when money have you, money detects what you should do. When you have money, you detect what money must do. It means that money does not control you. If you see somebody who has a wife, and after he gets money, having girls, he, money has him. He doesn't have money. Money has that person. That's what it is. You are going to stand before Jesus, I'm telling you. Compare them to come. I want you to pray this prayer from your heart. Lord, I don't want to mix my destiny. I don't want to stand before you and I will come for nothing. What is your gift? What is your talent? What is your gift? There were some girls in the choir. Huh? I was on that. They used to sit in the congregation. I started preaching some strong message like this. Some of them are now singing sorrow. They are singing sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. This girl, she was in the bank counting money. They still counting. Yeah, thank God. He is counting and singing. So we thank God. Yeah. Yeah. I saw one of them singing sorrow. He has been in the congregation for years. This lady here, this one. She was sitting with his husband, squeezing the husband's cheek when I'm preaching. This one here. Yeah. The first time I saw a singer, I said, hey, so this girl was sitting in a choir with this gift. Do you know? There's another person laughing. Do you know what he's sitting on? Man, can I tell you this and take it from me? You see all those who criticize, they didn't preach well. I don't like the quotation they are quoting. Chances are that they are preachers. Now, listen, don't clap. Anything that offends you means that you have answered to those problems. that offend you means you are, you are the solution to those problems. If you walk around and, and you see people throwing dirt and things on the streets and you are angry, it shows what God has put in you. Yeah. Nothing. Just come to church every time you want anointing. We have anointed you. Ah, what are you doing with anointing? Listen to, look at God prospering a man. Abraham, I will bless you. That you will become a blessing. So God doesn't bless people for nothing. He blesses you with other people in mind. It means that if Abraham doesn't become a blessing, he has failed in God's assignment. Yeah. What 
have you with God to do? You do nothing. There is nothing you do for the kingdom. Nothing. You don't sweep. You don't do. Yeah. Somebody came to Nigeria church and I heard the pastor giving the testimony. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You want the pastor to pray. The pastor said, go and sweep the toilet. And that church, eh? Ha! Ha! I think the toilet alone is about 1,000. Sweep. Ha. You, when you come and I say, go and sweep the toilet, you find another church. <laughs> no, people move from, they just go there and nothing happens. I'm telling you. And she, it was while she was sweeping the toilet, God opened her womb. Nobody prayed for her. He gave birth to three places. Nobody prayed for her. He just discovered what? Sit down and become kingdom Amaria. Kingdom Magadia. Maga, you know Magadia? Kingdom Magadia. There be no such an eye peche. What can one peche? What shall we go by? There be a sister, which means Sasa, a man so that they can dress and they can walk. Most of them are not such a chibi. They walk like a tortoise. They can walk. Everything is tight. You have no one in your soul. Everything is standing with a metal. Everything. Yeah, the stomach, they've tied it. The breast, a metal is holding it. You see them walking. You see them move. They move. When, they, when they are trying to climb a stair, somebody help their leg to climb. You could see that, no. And that is the kingdom, Magadjias. They don't do anything. They don't think about the kingdom. It is the reason why metals has become expensive. Metal support on women, only God can tell. Everywhere, metal, everywhere, metal. Metal support, the ear, the nose, the back, everything is supported by metal. And you have never won one soul. Some of you, you don't remember the last time you told somebody Jesus loves you. It is not in your vocabulary. No. You are looking for the latest prophet who can prophesy. No. If this is what Paul Dems did, the kingdom will not be there. If this is all the 12 apostles, can you imagine Jesus Christ died and let 12 unlearned people, 12 illiterate, they stormed the well. They stormed the well. The Bible said the doctors of the Lord, the Sahindri took notice that they are being with Jesus. You can't stop them. They beat them, they are preaching. Nobody's, they beat them, they are preaching. Ha! We are joking. We are jokers. No. Somebody become born again, come to the church. Three weeks, he's looking for a husband. Apostle, it's dangerous. Now, no discipleship class. They have become born again. So, we are marrying immature people in church. Put them in a position, they destroy the kingdom. They don't understand the position where God put them. They don't understand. You can marry a pastor, they don't know why you are there. No, you are there. You can, I'm telling you. A lot of pastors, their, their wife has destroyed their ministry. This, ah, when they, was it Pastor Martin that read it? One of the studio, somebody sent a testimony that he said he saw mommy. He said, I was tormenting my husband. And he knew he was a tormentor. He said it. And through my preaching, something happened to him. I had an encounter. And he said, now, listen, when he changed, according to her, the husband ministry is growing. It means that he was a killer of the ministry. The devil went to live because he was doing his work for him. No, you can be working for the devil unconsciously. No, no. No, no, no. Because people come to church, they become born again. They are beautiful. They are attractive. They come to the church. We don't spend time for them to grow. We are, we are anointing deacons who don't know God. We are choosing leaders who don't know Christ. So they become like principalities. I have seen pastors who choose leaders. The leaders destroy his ministry. They start detecting for the anointing. They kill it completely. They destroy the ministry completely. No, they don't even understand the purpose of the deaconship. The deaconess in the church, they were serving food. They were not there to sit down with a big stomach and detect for pastors. No, it's not there. No, there are girls here. Some of the girls here, they pray. You see them speaking in tongues, but they have no knowledge. The depth of knowledge is very low. And I know when they marry pastor, they will kill the guy. They will kill their ministry. Some of them are envious, jealous, very possessive. Yeah, insecure. 
They are there. And it's as a result of lack of the word. They have not discovered what God has called them to do. They don't even understand. This generation of women don't understand the ministry. When God gives you a pastor to marry, what is the purpose of your ministry? Why did God give this guy to you? Why? Why am I marrying a pastor? What am I supposed to do to advance the cause of his ministry? But where you are coming from, I'm telling you, do you know how many women have destroyed the ministry of their husbands? You have no idea. You have no idea. Much as God can use women mightily, the devil can also use them mightily. Whichever side they go, they can be a weapon of mass destruction. Women, they are powerful. I'm telling you. They say, they say behind every successful man, there's a woman. What is he doing to make the man successful? Think about it. Think about it. So, this one standing here, you can undermine them. But when they get to a position, they can shake a nation. They can shake a nation. They stand there like that, they can shake a ministry. Bam! Bring the ministry to a standstill. If they, are not, if they feel they are not satisfied, if they feel they are not secure, they can divide the family. I see some men who marry, and as a result of their mother, they don't talk to their mother again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your wife can stop you from talking to your mother who you suck his breast and grew. Yeah, they can stop you. And they do that because they are immature. They don't even know one day they will become a mother. No, when you are immature, you are immature. But you don't have knowledge, you don't have knowledge. They torment somebody. Some of them are praying, cursing their mother-in-law who nurtured their husband for them to marry. And they do that because they are not matured in the kingdom. What has God called you to do? What are you doing for the kingdom? Yeah. What about immature men in the kingdom? There are men in the church. You see them pray. They are firing on young girls. Left and right. Yeah. There are some of these girls. They don't fear God again. Oh, a young pastor has fired. A decay has fired. Everybody is fired. They don't fear God. No. Yeah. Apostle let me tell you this. It is extremely dangerous for a girl to come to church. And his pastor has slept with her. And the pastor is still preaching. She will conclude that all these guys are fake. She will conclude that, oh, this thing, it's not the way they talk. It's called perverted thinking. Yeah, because thieves think everybody is a thief. Yeah. What are you, why are you on earth? There's a three question you have answered. Where am I coming from? Huh. Why did I come to this earth? What is, what, what is my purpose on this earth? And when I die, where am I going? Hey. If you can't answer this question, you are going nowhere. No? So some of them, it's not that God is not giving them a husband. God knows who they are going to marry. But if God gives the guy to them, now they will kill the guy. They will destroy him. So God is waiting for them to mature some more. They will mature. Life has a key. Life, it has a key. It can beat you without any harm. And that cane will bring you to a place of soberness. You know, some girls, they are walking around every time shaking their hair. They are beautiful. Last, life has not lasted there. Life can last you. You forget about your beauty. You will not remember it. That is why they can prepare for wedding and not prepare for marriage. Yes. They will prepare seriously for wedding. They will never prepare for marriage. No. They will do whole wedding and fall down whole. The same speed they enter is the same speed they come out. Because they can't stand the pressures of time. When they meet reality, they run. Yeah. What is my purpose on it? What am I supposed to do for the kingdom? Ministry and coming, be a child of God is not coming to church. And just everybody has something you have to do. There is something that must give you satisfaction. I'm not the one to tell you. You have to pray until you discover it. Sometimes you naturally can stumble into it. Sometimes, it's, it's, when you see people doing it, you admire it. It means that it might be your gift. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I naturally love pastors who pray. When I see that you are prayerful, there is a way I get attracted to you or you can get attracted to me. That's what it is. I, I just love it. Hallelujah. I don't, I, 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 I'm, I don't, I tell people, I said that, I love to pray than to preach. If God gave me the opportunity one year, I can stay and pray alone. Just pray. That's all. 
when I go for waiting, last year, this year I was telling God that let one billion souls be won. And I pray about that one alone for 21 days. No, nothing. Lord, empower word, raise out international evangelists. Let them go to nations and storm the place. Now listen, those things you might not get the reward on earth, but it's waiting for you at heaven. And God can have a way of taking care of you. Even we, the pastors, God has to help us all because we are raising a wrong breed. We are breeding people and some of them hmm, uh, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Lift up your two hands. Is it wrong to prosper? No. Is it wrong to make money? No. What is the use of God making you a millionaire and the kingdom is suffering? What are the kingdom investors? I pity those of you that God has called you to give money. Luke chapter 8. If you read it, it's there. New Living Translation. If you read it. This is why Jesus survived on earth. Even the one who created all things when he came on earth. He survived. If you read the Bible, we tell you. Soon after that, Jesus began to talk nearby towns. Crusade team. There was no tracks like I'm, I'm trying to get tracks. Yeah. Nearby towns and villages preaching and announcing the good news of the kingdom of God. You can't go to crusade only speaking in tongues. Listen to what the Bible says. He took his 12 disciples with him. Now that statement means that if Jesus visits your house, you don't cook for Jesus alone. It's a strong statement. When you hear send the 12 disciples with him, when Jesus comes to your house, Bamos of Mame, you have a responsibility to cook for 13 people. The other one, this one, he said the 12 disciples were with him. So the other 70, they allowed them to go home for, to lessen the weight, but the 12, they're constant. Look at the next verse. How did he survive there? Along with some woman who had been cured of evil spirits. Ha! <sighs> what is the reason why God cured them? They were kingdom invested. The devil put spirits in them to destroy them. Jesus cast the spirit out. Evil spirit and some of them were sick. Cancers, they, they, God healed them. Among them were, and they started mentioning their name, Mary Magdalene. That Mary Magdalene, the word Magdalene is not a surname. There were a lot of Marys in the group. Mary, Jesus' mother himself. There, there was Mary, Martha's sister. And so this one came from a small village called Magdalene. So they used the town to separate him, to identify him. So when you say Mary Magdalene, it's the Mary who came from Magdalene. So when you go to Israel, it's a small town called Magdalene. That's where that Mary was coming because there were a lot of Marys there. So we use this one. Mary Magdalene, from whom he has cast out seven demons. Watch this. Now, Joanna. Joanna is the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager. So this girl has a political connection. And he was managing Herod's money. Powerful. And God connected him to the kingdom and into Jesus' crusade team. What were they doing? Susanna and many others, but these were the major ones, who were contributing from their own resources to support, to support. If Jesus needs support, what about Prophet Nana said? What is the use? This is a sad thing. Do you know the sad thing, Jackie? The day the trumpet of rapture will sound, all the Christians who didn't use their money for the kingdom is for the Antichrist. That is why Jesus said that you lay your treasures in heaven. Where do you lay your treasures? Where? Heaven. He said, mouse and thieves cannot stay. And the reason is that if you lay your treasures in heaven, you can't go to hell. How do I know that? Where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. He has to test Abraham. Look at the way he tested Abraham. He didn't, he test him to the level of his only begotten son. So God swear. He is the only one that made God swear. He swear by himself. Because there's nobody greater than him. He said, because of what you have done, I swear by myself. In blessing, I will bless you. Now watch this. But for that swelling to come, she was ready to sacrifice her son. This is the conclusion of the matter. If you can give me your son, what else will you reward from me? God said, if you can give me Isaac, then I don't need to ask for gold. You will carry all of them. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. May we not disappoint the kingdom. May we not disappoint heaven. So, may the Lord not make our head in brass. 
Akeka keka konkonsa abroni beye din konkonsa fra. It's like so kids. That is all in the church. Abro any day. Beye any other day. Abro is the gari. Beye is the granite. Konkonsa is the condensed milk. You are sugar to it. And you are going. Oh, you are there. I made a vow some years ago. I will not spend on myself in a year more than I spend on God. I have kept it. If you buy a car and check for me, I'll go and find out the value of the car. And I'll believe God to show that by the time the year is ending, I must spend on the kingdom more than I spend on myself. Way beyond. I love the kingdom. That's what it is. I love to see the kingdom advance. I love. When we finished this project and we were trying to set up a place for pastor to sit, I carried the chairs in our hall to come and put it here. I told my wife, it is a simple thing. Nobody should visit us. <laughs> if they visit, they should stay outside because there's no chair in the hall. I carry everything. Chairs in my compound. This, I carry them to bring it to church. Let's use it to set the place because there was no money to buy. That's what it is. Amen. No. I mean, hallelujah. It's just, it's just, it's just the state of the heart. If the heart is not correct, everything will not be correct. You don't give from your hand, you give from your heart. So if your heart gives, your hand cannot hold it. Once your heart gives, says your hand cannot hold it. I'm telling you. If, if, if a girl falls in love with you, no. She cannot sleep. Yes, sir. You call it 12 minutes, I cry, you pick it. I used to call mommy 12.30, crying, car, then you pick it. 12.30. She's not praying, she's waiting for a call. If you win a woman's heart, cry, you pick it. If God wins your heart, cry, you pick God's call. Once God wins your heart, Hey, you pick a score. Hey, you come to church, you see something is not correct in church. You see a door is broken. No, Papa, I want to fix it. I want to change this one. I want to change the carpet. I want to do this. I want to do those are the people we call the kingdom investors. When they see something is not going well in the house of God, they have sleepless night. You can't you broke or can't you not broke? You dance. You can only do this by grace. Grace. There can never be any greatness in the kingdom outside of grace. Behind every greatness in the kingdom, there is grace. Paul said, I'm hot, I am by the grace of God. To discover what God has called you to do to give you satisfaction, it comes by grace. Hmm. How did people that we see, we heard their name? Dr. Billy Graham, Ora Robert, Don Mue. Huh? Let's. Let's, uh, I mean, Evan Slatter. These people find out that they are called to write songs. And they did it. They committed themselves. Because after you find what God has called, you must commit yourself. Put your head into it. Nothing must stop you. Can you imagine somebody wants to stop me from preaching and prophesy? That person will never be born. Never. My head is too much into it. When I was caught in with my wife, I told her, I said, I love you, but I love God more than I love you. And I told her, I said, the place of God's love in my heart, you can't compete with it. If you try it, you have lost your life. He didn't understand it. Let her explain to her. Then he got to her, I said, that, a man that don't love God cannot love you. That's the principle. You shall love the Lord your God with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. Then you can love your neighbor as yourself. Unfortunately for you, you are looking for the one that loves you first. So that love is heading towards a crash. If a man loves God, you will not struggle to love you. In fact, a man that loves God will never commit adultery. If he did it, it's a temptation. He will cry and come out and never repeat it again. Let's answer, receive, receive grace. If you are called to give, receive grace to give. Yeah. If you are called to sing, receive grace to write songs. I receive it. How many volumes did Adam Reku sing before we came to know him? One song hit and God advertised you. 
And you now take no more pen. You know, back to to sing. It may take you time before you get there. So this young young musicians that are come, they sing when it doesn't hit, they stop. And then they could sing volume eight hundred and five. <laughs> oh, which one? Uh, it's not up to that point. Okay, I'll cover. Forty-two. Okay, volume forty-two. <laughs> Today he's a celebrity. I saw him recently singing in the U uh, Pentecost convention in the, U, in the United States. The whole convention, it was raining. He was singing. People were dancing in the rain. Do you know that anointing can make you sing? People dance in the rain. Yeah, volume, I forty-eight. It was forty-eight. I can one more, one more. Then the thing just what happened the bow, and then that's all. People sing three. They stop. Three. They stop. Forty-eight. Now you see, also for once you know this, what God has called you to do. Whether people are buying or not, you keep doing it. Ah. Whether people are listening or not, you keep doing yes, it. Sir. Whether people are here or not, you keep doing yes, it. Yes, sir. I who was listening to my message or not. You know, I was not. But the part, I don't think I don't. I care about who was listening to my message. I was preaching it. Whether the English is good or not, I'm preaching it because that's what I'm called to do. Amen. Somebody called me and said, "I listened to your tape that you preached in 2020, 2002. You say you preach about seven anointings or something." Seven something. I said seven anointings. Yeah. I, I don't even say that message bless me. I said that time when you were Christian, I said I was a pastor. <laughs> Why did he tell listen? No. You don't give up. You don't give up because you don't believe what God has given you. Volume 48. When Adam Reku starts singing, he started having a church. His church is one of the striving church in Kufodia. Powerful. A man with his own studio. He sat at the studio, one more, one more, he became a son. And that's what it is. Receive grace. Save it. Left to and say, Father. Father. Are you, are you alive at all? Yes, sir. If the, after the grace, if it's not there, it's a struggle. Yes. It's a struggle. The kingdom is no phonetics. It's no preaching. It's no how orator you are. It's grace. Yes. In fact, what you call anointing, anointing. Is grace. The greater your grace, the greater the exploit. You will not mix your calling. Amen. The devil will not divert your calling. Amen. May grace locate you in the center of the way of God. May you discover your mandate. Amen. May you discover the purpose of God for you. And may you fulfill it with grace back in you. Everybody say power. At a certain point in Acts, the Bible says God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. But before I come there, the Bible says aprons and handkerchief came out of his body. Everybody says special miracles. Huh? So we are going to talk about different things, but how to receive the mantle of power. Understanding is what brings an explosion. When we talk about going through the school of power, it means that passing through a learning process. Once you are going through the school of power, you, just, you, you, you don't arrive. I told you in the kingdom, you don't arrive. You only, you only make progress. So nobody come to the place I have arrived. There is no way you come to the place and feel like, hey, where I've come to, I have arrived. You only make progress. It is dangerous to come to the place of complacency in the kingdom. Are you with me or you've gone home? So the school of power is the school of learning process. Are you getting it? Part of the thing is what you are learning here today. Huh? Huh? Uh huh. Huh? And it's a learning process with a great expectation at the end of it, or you will succeed. So you will learn, but with an expectation that you are not learning to fail, you will succeed. Amen. Amen. Now, for instance, let me let me show you something. It takes God a long time to train people. God just doesn't put his anointing on people. If a God will not anoint anybody, he has not tested. Moses, huh? <laughs> was trained for 40 years for 40 years ministry. Can I say that again? Moses, one of the anointed men in the Bible, she was 40 years when he ran away from Egypt. She came back and said, let my people go when he was 80 years. He died at 120. So, at the time Moses came to Pharaoh, he had stayed under the, the, the tutelage and the mentorship of Midian his wife's father, he was a Midianite priest. He studied under Jethro for 40 years. Part of them, part of his school classes was to take care of sheep. 
Now, anybody that can handle sheep for 40 years can handle any stubborn people. Yes, sir. Lord, they are not listening, but I'm preaching. Yeah. This is the second message. Everybody says the school of power. Are you getting what I'm talking about? When you come and we give you mantles, what is the purpose of the mantles? Some of you are going to grab your mantle, you put it there, no use. Now, let me tell you something. The mantles we give it to you eh, is because of the things we deal with it in our generation. Because there are people in your office with tarismus. Some of them have charms. And the devil gave them the charm because the devil knows that a child of God can get the mantle. Because he can only produce the counterfeit version of the original. The Bible is an open book. Even Satan read it. He quoted scriptures to Jesus. The prophetic anointing deals with mantles and tokens. That's what it is. I'm going to show you something in a second. Amen. When Elijah was going to heaven, all he left for Elijah was a mantle. Mantle. It is Elijah who must learn how to apply the mantle. Elijah didn't tell Elijah that when he came to the Jordan, we must strike it. He did it for him to see how it works. He took the mantle and said, what is the Lord God of Elijah? Bam! The water divided. So when you get the mantle, I'm not the one to teach you how to apply it. If a child is dying, lay the mantle on the child. And because you believe that this is not an ordinary thing. No, this is not ordinary. This is not ordinary. Hallelujah. If the doctor is telling something about your stomach, lay it there. Others have done it and get a breakthrough. Others have done it. They release your faith. These things, they help you to release your faith. They help you. Do you know that? After the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus and he shared the testimony, the Bible said many were touching his garment and they were healed. So people dive into that faith. Oh, does it mean you can touch a man? By the time he get to Paul, they told Paul, you don't need to pray for us. This is our handkerchief. Just lie on it. The Bible said aprons and handkerchief were taken from Paul's body and special miracles. It is in Acts chapter 90, when we read verse number 11 and 12, God wrote special miracles. It is the people that brought the mantles, but it is God that wrote the, 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 the miracles. And God wrote, and God wrote special miracles. And God wrote special, give me the New Living Translation. And God did what? Wrote special. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. So, as a result of this one, come back to King James. God gave Paul unusual God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. How did he do that special miracles? Look at the hot box, the special miracles in the next way. So that from his body, from his body, from his body, since this mantle was on altar on sometimes God will tell me, go and lie on it. The Lord will tell me, go and lie on it. The Lord will tell me, go and do something on it. Yeah. Amen. There was a man, Dan, what is, what is the name of that guy who took some of my dress? Uh, He's from somewhere. I think he's from Latvia or something. The guy from Seattle. Where, where, where is he from? Eritrea. Eritrea. There was a guy who came for prophetic invasion. He followed me. And he knelt. I said, Papa, do me a favor. I said, what is it? He said, I want the dress you used to wear to, to preach. And those dresses, I bought them. <laughs> I gave the dress to him. She wore the dress. Went to a meeting, they invited him. And the heavens opened. Yeah. Ha! He sent me the video. He started calling people's names. He started lifting his hand. People were falling under the power. If it's his wife asked him, what has happened to you? When you change, your wife can tell. When you get anointed, your wife can tell. Your wife knows you carry nothing. <laughs> he knows. He knows you carry nothing. The day you carry something, they will tell. Then he knows your level. Are you getting what I'm talking about? All he received was a mantle. Later, he came to me and he said, Papa, can I get seven of the dresses? I will pay. When I didn't give the dress, he traveled and came here. So if you have forgotten. And when I was going, I gave him the dresses. And that's all he went to preach. One pastor friend told me, any time I go to abroad, he drives me around and he said, give me one of them, give me one of He said, he went to a meeting to preach. When he stand by some place, he heard the name Peter. He said, ah, why Peter? 
Then he said, who is Peter? The guy said, ah. He said, Afa. In Batesh. No. A lot of you don't know how to tap into power. You don't know how to tap into anointing. Do you know the problem of this generation? Familiarity. It brings contempt. Amen. Do you really desire to have power? Let me ask the people. Do you, these people, you see the way they are even. Do you desire to have power? I said, do you really desire to have power? The power you receive. Let me tell you this. The devil has no respect for your phonetics and your grammar. When you cross over to the spirit realm, the only language the devil respects is power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So Satan is not afraid of your English. He's not an Englishman. Did Jesus spoke English? Uh, coming to treasure people, it was Jesus a, a British? No. Oh. Amen. Yeshua Amashia didn't speak English. Jesus never spoke English. Don't just brag. I say when you cross into the supernatural, listen, when a witch knock at your door, the only thing you respect is what? Power. <laughs> listen to this one. Archbishop Benson, the host of blessed memory, was in America and he heard the news. International, which is a wizard's conference, venue, Benin City, Nigeria. <laughs> so they put it there. All witches are going to meet, and their they are, they are meeting place is in Archbishop City. He said, He cannot come home. He stopped the meeting he's doing in America and travel back. And he said, The meeting cannot come. Home. So, you know, the media loved this kind of things. So they brought them on television. They, they, they interviewed the man, they called the man, and they said that. What, what did you say? He said, the head of the witches. He said, the meeting can, and they said, Abishop said, the meeting cannot come. He said, not even God can stop it. The witch man said, not even God can stop the meeting. It's coming on. So they asked Abishop, can you come to the television and meet this man? He said, wow, for sure, I'll come. So they put them there. And they said, sir, Abishop, what do you say about the meeting? He said, no, it's not come. It, it can't come on. They said, sir, what do you say? He said, I said, not even God can stop it. They said, Bishop, what do you say about that? I said, it's correct. It's correct. God doesn't need to come. This one, God said to me, myself, I'll stop it. It's called power. He said, this one is too big for God. In the house, I'm here. Lord, stay there. Leave it for your son. I'll stop them. If you don't have power, you can't speak like that. Power. The man was laughing. The, 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 the interviewer asked the witch leader, tell us how powerful witchcraft he quoted six and seven book of Moses, European book, Egyptian book, uh, your mother's book, every book he quoted it. <laughs> they finished and they asked the bishop, the man is explaining how witches, he said, is the meeting coming? He said, is the meeting going? He said, no, I'm not saying the meeting is going to be canceled. I've canceled it. He said, it's canceled. The, the man was laughing. He said, and they said, what do you say? What do you say? Because the man said, the meeting. he said, no, it's very simple. I am going to ask him one question. His answer should be yes or no. They say when he asks yes, when he answers yes, what will you do? He say, I'll kill him. Here, he will die. And he quoted the scripture and said, my Bible said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So they say, what is your question? He say, I want to ask him, you, you said, are you a witch or you are not a witch? He said, I'm not a witch. The meeting ended there. It ended. May you receive power. Mantles. These are men who carry mantles. The, I mean, which is has coming to meet. That's not where to speak grammar. It is power. If the devil knock at your door, it's power. If the devil hit your body with sickness, it's power. If the devil threaten you with death, it's power. May you receive power after this mantle come upon you. No. Some of you cannot see you are afraid of witches and everything and all that because there's no power around your environment. That is why we have to even pray at the studio for the anointing to leap from the studio and get to your house. Amen. So we agree with prayer with you in your home. Amen. And it's by revelation. Yeah, if another pastor do it, God has not given it to you, pray, nothing will happen. People are getting here. People whose fiancés have run away seven years, they are coming. Yes. Cancers. Look at the testimony. Can you play the testimony of the guy who came here to pray? Play a testimony. He calls me to share tears. Dangerous testimony. That he has twins and the boys cannot talk. One of them talk. One of them cannot talk. She came to give me an offering here and he said, Papa, say something. 
And I pray. I say, God, Lord will grant your desire. I saw him one of the day. We were coming from the studio. Uh, his boys, he said they are 12 years or something. 18. Eight years. Eight years. He cannot talk. So one is called Henry or one is called something. So one talks, one cannot talk. He finished praying here midnight and he was calling to check his family. This is the testimony. My name is Amo Tibu. I'm from Connecticut, uh, USA. Um, and I just have a testimony I want to share with the body of Christ. Um, I followed the ministry of the man of God since November last year. And it's been a very, very great experience. I'm sitting here today um, giving a testimony about what I experienced in the first week. I came here with desperate high expectations. Desperate high expectations. I'm a father. Most of you, I assume, are fathers too. You have kids, uh, you should be able to have a conversation with your kids. What if some of your kids talk and some don't talk? What do you do? Um, I have twins, twin boys. One speaks, one mumbles. You can hear whatever he says. You know, I don't even know how to call his speech. I'm giving him all everything, speech classes, everything, uh, every therapy. So I came here um, seeking the face of God, for God to do something in my life and in his life. And after the first night, the second night, I had a sense in my spirit just to walk on this ground seven times, bare feet. So I did walk seven times in front of the man of God's house, that street, seven times. I went to my hotel room and I said, you know what, let me reach out to them before I go to bed. I called and someone picked the phone and I asked, how is it going? This boy started speaking. Um, it's been raining all day that I didn't get a chance to go outside. And then I said, uh, hey, can I talk to Ariel? So the twins, Aiden speaks, Ariel don't speak. So I said, can I talk to Ariel? In my mind, I'm thinking I'm talking to Aiden. And then he said, Daddy, that is me, Ariel. I, I said, Daddy, is me, Ariel. How is your day? It might be normal to everybody. You come home, your kid asks you how your day is going. I got to wait eight years to hear that. I got to wait eight years to hear my child ask me how my day is going. And I don't know how I keep this to myself. I don't know how I keep this to myself. I can have a conversation with my son now. And I thank God. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. Hallelujah. This is what God can do. They just told me that he sent another testimony that he has got a brand new job. Brand new, because I was telling me, brand new job that pays him better. Just one encounter at Portes left, bam, it has happened. May you never leave here after this fasting the same way you came. If you don't become, he said, I came here with desperation. I, my expectation was very high. This is a miracle. So in his mind, eh, I love what that, uh, Ken Hagen said. He said, God will heal you that we will be looking for the sickness. You can't find it. Yeah. So he thought he was talking to Iran or something. But it's the other one that talks. So for the first time in eight years, he heard his son talk on the phone. And tears of joy. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. What made that thing happen is the power of God. And may the power of God open up the heavens on your head. May the Lord grant your heart desire. The tears you are selling, I call it tears of joy. The, your next tears, may it be tears of joy. This kind of tears eh, is called tears of joy. You are sharing the tears because you can't even, you can't explain. We have done anything. Therapy school, speech school. They've tried everything. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. What encounter? Come to Porter. There is something on this ground. And this, this mantles are coming from this ground. And when the mantle hits you, all the grace for building, all the grace for prayer, all the grace for beauty, all the grace for splendor, all the grace for aroma of favor, it will hit your home as this mantle hits you. All the grace of favor and prosperity. It will hit you. Believe it. Believe it. I say believe it. 
Yeah. One man of God said, the first time he came here, he removed his shoe eh, and walking on the ground and took a sand. She went there. A land that for 20 years they won't sell to him. He poured the sand and then the family called him and said, We are selling the land. And he has built a church of the church. Somebody said, Power. Hey, today, tomorrow, power will change hands. The witches and the altars will know that power has changed hands. I said they will know the power. They will come to your bedroom and know that God is with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> huh? I ask you a question. Do you really desire power? The second question we see that will answer. Are you ready to pay the price for it? Are you willing to pay the price, whatever it may cost? May you receive grace to pay that price of power. See that when we talk about the mantle of power, we are talking about the outward manifestation of God's power. When we talk about the mantle of power, we are talking about the outward manifestation. Paul says something in the book of First Corinthians, huh? chapter number four and verse number twenty. When we talk about this, how many people have received the mantle? This one I used to preach. People have taken it from my hand by faith and going to put it on things, and things has happened to them. We had a testimony of somebody who they put the mantle after they did the surgery and because of the nature of the, they took his uterus. They took his uterus, the doctor's wife, and the mantle was just on his belly. So they're supposed to do two sessions of the surgery. We are taking your uterus. We are going to open you up and do another surgery. Because when they open, they alone know what they saw. They know. Huh? And they took the womb. The mantle was there. By the time they open your womb back again, the uterus has come back. Brand new uterus has come. The doctor shouted, Hey! Call the team. The team has come back. The uterus has returned. They asked, Hey, where do you go to church? This thing we used to preach. If you don't understand what, can you imagine Elisha took the mantle and went to use it to buy granite? Don't, if you don't know the purpose of a thing. For the kingdom of God is not in word. That's what I'm telling you. Stop about barking about grammar. The kingdom of God is not in French phonetics. It's not in Spanish. It's not in English. The kingdom of God is not in word. But in what? Power. I wish you shouted right. It's in what? Power. This is so. If you are, it is dangerous to be in the kingdom and you are powerless. Yeah. This is what I tell you to pray before you go to bed. Yeah. This is what I tell you to speak in tongues. This is what I tell you to charge your atmosphere. Power. Accident see you, they run. Demon see you, they run. Blood tested demon see you, they run away. Because of power. Not everybody's looking for power. Hallelujah. Not everybody's looking for it. Every power the devil will give you, you will use it to kill you. But when God empowers you, Paul said the kingdom of God is not in way, but it's in what? Power. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Where do you get the power from? It will be released through this mantle by the power of the Holy Ghost. God wrote special miracle. Huh? And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive what? So the source of all power in the kingdom is the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. So don't sit in church and in the name of ignorance, you are not speaking in tongues. Hey, my church don't speak in tongues. The Bible is older than your church. My bishop don't believe in tongues. How old is he? And how old is the Bible? You don't need your bishop to confuse you. Read the Bible for yourself. It's an open book. It's an open book. Jesus himself said, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The arrival of the Holy Ghost on earth in the day of Pentecost, the Bible said there, was, there came a mighty rushing wind. It filled the whole place and they came clothing tongues of fire on their head and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them a trance. So tongue talking releases power over you. Now, if you only bring prayer to the place of asking and receiving, you'll be frustrated. Yes, sir. If all your prayers, God, give me, give me. Prayer is not only asking and receiving. It's a spiritual system God put in place for your edification, for your building up. He that speaks in a known tongue, edify himself. So when your spirit man is edified, your faith is also built up. And once your faith is built up, 
doubt and fear leaves you and you step into dangerous realms of manifestation building up yourself on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost he that speaketh an unknown tongue edifies himself charge himself build himself up and he walk without fear Somebody said the mantle of power. You come to us, say the mantle of power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <laughs> what is power? The word power is a Greek word for the word dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. dunamis. Power is the ability to do. Every object is in a state of rest until external forces are applied. So if you do nothing, God does nothing. Huh? Every object is in a state of rest until external forces are applied. Everybody say dunamis. It is the same word we get the word dynamite. A prayerful Christian is a, is, is a very strong dynamite Christian. These are the people when they speak, power backs it. It's not the way you are speaking, it's the power that backs it. When I meet a witch and Kwame meet a witch and we speak, it's not the same. Are you getting what I'm talking about? No. When I used to tell you that no witch in my family can greet me, it's not a fan. No. I know what I'm talking about. No. It's not a religious idea talk. At all. No, 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 no. I told you to open the Bible. It's there. It's there. It's already in my spirit. It's already. No accident demon can stand on my way. It's not possible. It cannot happen. No. The devil knows that the scriptures cannot be broken. It's not the Bible you have under your pillow that carries power. It's the word that you have picked, Rema, that is in your spirit. <laughs> As Bishop said, Suffer so not a way to live. That witch leader knows that if he say yes, he's a dead man. Yeah. He knows it. He knows. There is no way darkness will not respect light. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a struggle. Between darkness and light, there's no struggle. There will be no struggle between the two of them at all. That light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And, the, the, and that is the true light that lighted every man that came to the world. That means that that light shines in darkness and the darkness saluted. it. Yes. Bam! So when you see darkness, bring light. Oh. Sickness is darkness. Poverty is darkness. Affliction is darkness. Most of the things you call confusion in your family is an enchantment. It's a divination. It's a witchcraft attack. The way you are divorcing, it's not because your husband has made a mistake. They've programmed the marriage for destruction. And you are powerless to resist it. After today, you receive power. I say after today, you will receive our power. A man of God said, I went to my hometown, my cousin was developmental problem. They say he doesn't recognize anybody. He said, when I went to his room, he stood up and recognized me. He portrayed and greeted me as a Nigerian. And he told me, he said, put him in my car and let me see the devil that will follow him there. They put the guy in the car, the madness left him instantly. to Jesus Christ. I see the power of God descending on your life. <laughs> After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, receive what? Power. What is power? Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. <laughs> I say the word dynamite comes from the word dynamite. Is that right? Do you know what dynamite does? It is what they used to crack rocks. So when you want to crack big rocks, they set dynamite on it and they kakaka it to crack the rocks. So when you release the dynamite of supernatural power, every rock obstacle will be scattered immediately. Receive that power. Listen, we have been given mantles here, but I can tell you, do you know this mantle? It's called mantle of permanent victory. Because some of us, your victory is too up and down. 2021, your finances will go 22. Wham! It is down. Your victory is not permanent. A guy will propose it will never end to marriage. It means the victory is not permanent. It never end to the conclusion. No. Today you have money. The next day you don't have money. There is a place we call the place of all run rest. Marital home, you are at peace. Financially, everything is fine. When the fridge is poor, it doesn't become a fight before you get a new one. 
Somebody bought a second hand fridge, use it for 10 years. The fridge goes spoiled. The man best in anger. What is it? I told you people, you put hot cocoa inside, you put hot like cotton brown, you do what? You are spoiled the fridge. And it says, I'm telling you. No. It means that they don't have financial rest. They don't have financial rest. If you don't have financial rest, eh, somebody scratch your car, you lie on the floor and roll. No. Somebody hears somebody's ex class Mercedes Benz. He just got down, looked at the taxi driver, smiled, and drove his car away. No. I saw two, I saw a taxi, a taxi, a trotro mate, and a passenger fight. The trotro mate lost two sets of his teeth. Blows caca. When we ask the matter, it has to do with a change of 50 pesos. I think that don't say you saw one there. The 50 pesos, he became like a rabbit. He lost two sets of his teeth. This is what poverty can do. When this man can get to your house, you will not look for money. Money will be looking for you. No, let me go to the people here because you are not serious. I say, when this man can get to your house, whatever you have been looking for, it will begin to look for you. Success will look for you. Blessing will look for you. Breakthrough will look for you. Everything the devil has told you will be restored. Mantle of permanent victory. Many people are not getting permanently. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before unto, unto singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Hey! You are not clapping. Give me the New Living Translation. I'm closing. This shall be your testimony. Powerful, 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 powerful. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and the hill will burst into singing, into song. And the trees of the field will clap their hands. Amen. Okay? Your blessing is so amazing that when you are coming, the trees started clapping. Yes, 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 yes. I see trees clapping their hands. This is a dangerous prophetic mercy. If the trees are clapping, what will human beings do? If the trees are clapping for mango trees, hey. pear trees, guava trees, hey. all the trees are clapping for your blessing, then how will human beings do? What will human beings do? This is the word of the Lord. Your, your blessing is so amazing. Mantle of power. Why do people go to Juju? They give them something. They know. The devil knows what he can do. You don't believe anything. No, you don't believe anything. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't believe anything. Amen. Mantles, it called people into ministry. Mantles called people into ministry. Do you know, Elisha was called into ministry by mantles. Elijah was passing, he was farming, and he cast his mantle on him. He left everything and followed him. Mantle of power. Mantle of power. Mantle of power. People can take juju. One day when we went to there is a girl who gave a, a demonic attack on her life. Some of you remember. He said he was there. Some man looked at him and said, open your hands. And he said something. And he said something. And when the man said, the man said, remove your dress. He removed his dress. And the man put it at the back of a kiosk and have sex with her. He came to tell her. Ask Pastor Martin then. He has sex with her. It means that he was bewitched. If you don't carry any power, whatever they throw at you works. No. Nobody would throw something at me that do not return and kill the person instantly. It's not possible. Do you know the territorial witches you have driven from this land? It was their headquarters. This is where they gather. None of them can come here. We dredge a river, but nobody has ever touched that river for centuries. One man told me, he said, for you to touch this river, I know that God is with you. I said, this one, nobody is not to say. This is a God that they worship. They told me, they said, you can't even put a canoe on it. We canoe it. We have bridged it. They say, you can't bridge it. It's, there's a bridge on it. If you don't carry power, there's some things you can't do. I put a machine and open it up. Nobody has ever tried. I see power coming to your disposal. Amen. I say, I see power coming to your disposal. Amen. <laughs> they have done the bridge, Woody. It was not cement. The Lord said, if you want to dominate it, drive to the other side. 
It is even the, my wife was sitting inside. She was she was hanging like this. Gag, 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 I get to the other side. The Lord said, "You have dominated it." Amen. That's it. Came back on the wooden bridge. We brought guys to come and do the bridge from from uh, Adan. They are the one who does bridges because we have to. They have to bring that their ship eh, and cut. Because you are putting the concrete in the water, they must dredge the water and pull the sand so that they drive the pipes into the ground and we cast concrete. Five of them came and they said, we can't do it. They will come and look at the river and say, no, I can't, I can't do the work. The guy that came to do it, when he came, he said, all the people that came here, they can't do it. They are light. When the guy started, he told Parker, I said, your father is powerful. He said, why? He said, hey, the river people visited me. And they told me to stop the work. And I told them that they should go and tell the man who told me to do it. And they told me that I shouldn't tell the man that they came to me. No, Parker didn't he tell you. Ask Mr. Parker. They attacked the guy's wife. And the guy came to me and said, Papa, you are the only one who can pray for my, my wife to be here. If you don't have power, you don't have it. This one is not. If, from today, you have God's backing. God's backing. May you receive God's backing for whatever you do. It's not talking and making noise. Wait, 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 wait. If you don't carry it, they know. They don't need to tell you. If you don't know, they know. Hallelujah. No witch will fly above your roof. No, you sit down and don't say, I'll say, no witch will fly above your roof. Amen. Why do we need a mantle of power? 12. Now, listen, today, something strikes me. Do you know why you need power? Let me show you something. Even the devil respect anointing. I will show you. Elijah was sitting on the mountain. The king wanted to arrest a man who does even have a scissors. Wow. And he sent 50 soldiers. <laughs> so the 50 soldiers to catch one man shows how they respect the anointing. In the realms of the spirit, they concluded that that man alone in the spirit, it takes 50 soldiers wow. arm to catch him. Wow. And when they came, they make a mistake. Man of God. He said, oh, so you know I'm a man of God. And you are coming to arrest me. Roast. The stupid second soldiers that came, they could have seen the chinchinga on the ground. The third one was wise. When he came, he said, yeah, the, the third one, he said, come down now. They were trying to be rude. He said, you, I thought you would learn a lesson. Roast double. The third one came, he said, sir, I dare not touch you. I am on duty. Please spare my life. My wife just finished the bottom bottom. I want to go and eat it. The guy was so wise. So wise. He saved his life. No. Don't mess with an anointing. When we talk about the power of God, it's anointing of God. That's what it is. Huh? If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. So it's the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead. Listen. <laughs> Jesus committed his body and his life to the hands of the power of God that when he died, you raise him. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, so you don't know what to carry. Mm. You are walking around, running head scatter. The spirit that raised Jesus' dead body from the dead lives in you. Mm. That is what Paul said. I lost something about American, so American police. Guys! They have power and they demonstrate it. You see them, you start checking yourself. Their presence brings the spirit of the fear of God. American police. I have people have drive me in America on the highway. At the point, you see all the cars are breaking. It means the police car is parked. That's right. The man has not spoken to you. One police told me, he said, me, he said, I don't even need to see this. He developed a, a toy, a totometer, a da. It's like a baloo, like a form of human being. So he blow it and put it in the driving seat. And he walk around. <laughs> when people see the car without toy, the toy is a police. Go, 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 go. Everybody's checking himself. They, they know they have the power, they use it. No. Unfortunately, we are not using our power. Everything is jumping around you. House fly, ketre. In Kastri, in Kura, everything. Somebody told me you were sleeping. When you wake up, a mouse has chewed his fingers. Oh, who do you say? He said he ate and he didn't wash his hand. 
a crowd winning sound your own self if you are winning or we or we more and over in San Ancas as a cow or such a rough rice any a total beef it was in the sun doesn't have power from today no mouse will chew your hand now so for that mouse is not a normal mouse oh it's a satanic agent you want to be a French in a son of winning Sansu Khan? Vinina, hallelujah. What are you talking about? Who say God no day? Where, where are the Egyptians? Where are their power? Moses silenced them. Egypt came to a standstill. Hey! One man with a rod. Pa! Water became black. Pa! Dark. The Bible said there was a darkness that can be felt. It means that no light can penetrate. You put on any light, it cannot penetrate through the, that darkness. Darkness that can, which means short darkness in the way of old apostle, the darkness can be felt with a rod. Pointed the sun, frogs are coming, mice. One day, he, by, his, by his instruction, every firstborn in the country died. Power. Power. I say they will respect you from today. Yeah. All the cars you see in the street, eh? Eh? Some of them, the cars are not just driving, there are things inside. Yeah, things inside. One man of God said, he sat in a taxi. The taxi driver, he agreed to pay some money to him. And he gave him the money, said, this place is so, I won't give you the change. And he was trying to drive. He said, if you get to your destination, God has not sent me. 100 meters, he drive into a gutter. He came back, please forgive me. He said, I'm going to command the car to be burnt. He lied down flat. Ah, who, who, who said that testimony about? Who said that testimony about Cape Coast? A man of God went there and he said, All the principalities and the powers there. Bishop Takiya boy, he said, Young evangelist, I suspend all of you. The fetish priest started, gung, 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 nothing was happening. After the evangelist has left, they called Gungu when the spirit came. He said, Where were you? He said, Shut up, didn't choose the man, stop us. <laughs> From today, you shall decree a thing. I say, you shall decree a thing. And it shall be established. Lift up your two hands and pray. Lord, power to decree for you to be established. Open your mouth. You shall decree a thing. God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the message. For further inquiries, contact Well Prayer Center, P.O. Box GP21421 Accra or telephone plus 233-274-009933 or plus 233-242-472655. Email us on info at portercity.com or visit our website www.portercity.com. Location plot 16, Mutual Road, Pram Pram, Greater Accra, Ghana.